I'm Mazgun. And I'm Daniel. And welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Manet or Monet, then you're in the right program. Welcome. Welcome. So today we will be analyzing a painting uh, by a French painter on English history. And I have Daniel with me today. Maybe we start uh, introducing you to our viewers. Yeah, an English painting to be reviewed <laughs> and to questions asked by an English guy who knows nothing about English history or English art. So hopefully my idiot's questions can give the perspective on these paintings that you wished somebody had asked as the one he was explaining. I don't know that much about art. I've attended your classes that you've given here face to face in Gothenburg from the Baroque period onward. And that's the only background I have in art, actually. So I'm hoping that the questions that I bring uh, will, will represent the beginner or the idiot's perspective on how to look at these paintings. Yeah, but that's exactly why we're having this program. This is Art Talks for Beginners and Daniel will be hopefully asking. <laughs> yeah, he's the beginner yeah. and he's going to be asking the questions you wonder about the painting and we will just take it from the beginner's perspective. That's what, why we're doing it. Yeah. So hopefully that will help Daniel and you as well. So here we go with the painting. Daniel has the painting on his iPad and you will be seeing the painting while we talk on the screen. So Daniel, when you look at the painting, mm -hmm. what do you see? And what is your first impression? I it? see two figures uh, in what I think is a bedroom. Mm -hmm. it looks like they're reviewing a text or a picture in a book maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I see that they are, one of them is looking out of the picture. Maybe somebody is, he's, this person's nervous or they're, Worried mm -hmm. about something outside of the frame, but the other person looks quite relaxed, I'd say. Okay. And I also want to say that I really don't like their haircuts. <laughs> that's, that's a personal thing. That's so a personal know. opinion. Yeah. But so when you look at the figures, you feel that one of them is maybe a little bit more relaxed, but the other one is a little yeah, bit more tense. Exactly. Do you think so? The one on the left looks kind of nervous. Where does he look? Something. Outside, maybe outside of the door. Could there be somebody knocking maybe on the door? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good one. And other than those figures, what do you see here? Another object or another detail that... Yeah, I see the bed is, around. Mm -hmm. um, it looks quite grand. So I don't mm -hmm. think this is like, this is not the, a, a painting of peasantry. I think it's probably no. quite yeah, high upper class. class upper yeah. class, exactly. Um, yeah, they're quite well, the clothes that they're wearing are quite fine. Exactly, so I yeah. would say that it's probably yeah, another indication that they are upper class. Yeah. So the, yeah. these are the signs we should read when we look at the painting. First, we see the bed, for example, it's, it's a very ornate bed, it's, it's super big and there are nice, light, nice fabric on it, there is some curtain flowing through the bed and these children, they have nice clothes on them, they have a big book in their hands, so it shows that they, they come from upper class, basically, they're not peasants. So, uh, other than the figures, what what else do you see? There's another thing that you should you should notice in the painting. Yeah, I'm looking towards this dog. My eyes are drawn to the dog down at the bottom, which I think could also the dog could also be looking outside or having heard something outside of the room. Exactly. So maybe that adds to my thought that maybe somebody, yeah, if you look at the figure on the left, maybe somebody's outside or calling to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the dog noticed that. And the dog has noticed Because yeah. the dog is also turned towards the door, you might see to it. To the it, sound, maybe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a, that's a good guess. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit hard to see in this painting because it's quite dark, but there is a door on the left side, mm -hmm. and the dog is turned towards that. And when you look at the boys, one of them, which feels a bit more nervous, he turns towards the door as well. So what you guess is actually quite right that the dog heard the sound and the boy turns to the sound and maybe or maybe to the sound of the dog mm -hmm. which turns towards the door mm -hmm. so after uh, preliminary analysis we can say maybe we can talk about the history and the story behind uh, this painting actually these two boys that seemed a little bit nervous uh, they are actually the two princes from from English history Mm -hmm. uh, their father, Edward IV, uh, died quite uh, prematurely and then uh, one of the boys, the, the elder one, the blonde one, the mm -hmm. haircut is very prominent, yeah, the yeah. one that you didn't like maybe, <laughs> uh, he's going to be the king. He's Edward V. Okay. And next to him is his brother, Richard, and they're reading a book in their bedroom. 
And the background of the story is like this. Uh, when their father died, their uncle, Richard, he is the protector of them. And he takes them and just puts them in the Tower of London. And this is supposed to be a preparation period for the coronation of Edward V, the elder child. Uh, but while they were in Tower of London, the uncle does something. He declares that the children are illegitimate. Oh no. Yeah. Drama. And, and exactly. English drama. <laughs> and, uh, and then he ascends uh, the throne himself. Ah, wow. And these poor little boys disappear. So it is, it is believed that they were actually smothered to death. Smothered? By, yeah, by their uncle. Oh my god. By their un uncle's order. So Richard, when he takes the throne, I'm sorry he becomes... about our dark history. It's quite dark. It's quite dark. And uh, Richard then becomes Richard the Third, and mm. this even becomes a popular subject after Shakespeare's play Richard the Third. Right. So that is that is a very popular subject from English history. It's quite dark. What, a, doctor. what mm -hmm. a great topic to have as a painting, though. There's, there's lots of story, lots of lots of stuff that you could represent here. I believe that's why that's why the painter painter is painting this right. this scene but it's not an english painter you said no that's okay. a french painter we will get to that right and uh, one one last thing we when we look at this painting we should see that it's the dog who alerts us and the boys as well and the boys one of them richard especially feels very nervous he, he hears the sounds coming up uh, through the door probably because and when you look at the door on the loft le left lower corner there's some light coming out i noticed that yeah uh, to, to inside so there's somebody is just this, behind the door and this is the king coming to smother them yes is that that or moment? the king is oh, sending no. his his men to smother them that oh, is God. the exact moment when wow. they're going to be killed that's why it's very exciting and that's why the painter paints exactly the scene to create this very uh, tense effect on us to <laughs> to impress the weavers and it's Holland. really dark Exactly, wow. very, very dark. And the other boy, actually, we feel he's a little bit more relaxed, maybe. But we may also think that because he's the elder one, maybe he knows what is going to happen to them. He already guessed mm -hmm. that and he looks a little bit more melancholic to us. Resigned, we can say. Maybe. A little bit more resigned. He, he knows there's nothing that he can do. Mm. Maybe we can think like that. So you can read those emotions a bit. Just notice this huge ring he's wearing. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's royalty, so... Yeah. So that's that's how we how we put the story together. Wow. When you look at the painting, mm -hmm. can you try to guess maybe what period and what movement it comes from? Okay. So looking at the technical stuff that I learned in your classes, I'm drawn to the light work. So the difference between the very bright light on the bedding versus the background, which is quite dark. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think that I, it's probably Baroque. I know that was quite common in mm -hmm. that era um yeah that's gonna be my guess so i'm gonna say like early 1700s mm -hmm. i'm just guessing here okay i mean uh focusing on all the light and shadow effects as you say it's, it's very dark in the background which which we see a lot in in baroque especially in caravaggio for example mm -hmm. the chiaroscuro but this is actually not baroque uh the date of the event is 1483 so it's 15th uh -huh. century. It's the even the date of the event is earlier than Baroque. You but told me the king's names. I should know when. Edward the Fourth. Yeah, that's your history. Whoops. <laughs> uh, and um, but this painting is from 1831, actually, from wow. 19th century. Much and the French painter De La Roche uh, painted this to exhibit it at the Salon Paris, the the Paris exhibition of the Academy. And this style might look a little bit baroqueish because it because of its dark tones, but this is what we truly call the French academic style. Mm, what is so? What is academic style? How do you know that it's that and not just by looking mm -hmm. at it? Are you able to tell? Uh, there are some things uh, you can you can tell by looking at it. You just of course the the date gives you gives you a very big clue because the French academic painting is much dominant in the nineteenth century. But other than this, the French academic style uh, focuses either on historical facts or Greek Roman mm -hmm. history, and they just try to create a sense of perfection, perfect looking paintings. And in this one, uh, Delaroche 
take, took this event from the English history and painted it in the academic style. And when we look at it, what you focus on in academic painting is that it has smooth surface finish. Mm -hmm. It may be difficult to guess that or see that in, in a copy when you look at it on your screen, but when you see the real image, in front of you in a museum, you see that there are absolutely no brush strokes visible. This is what we call a smooth surface finish, which was very common in both neoclassicism and afterwards academic art in, in France as well. That is something very specific. So in academic art, I guess they're trying to make the painting as perfect as possible. Exactly. It's about craft. Exactly. Right? That's yeah. what they're after. And on top of that, academic painters, and especially De La Roche, focuses on creating a scene that absolutely looks like what it should look like in that time in 1483. So he focuses a lot on how the furniture looks like, how the clothes look like. Realistic. Yes, mm -hmm. very realistic looking at, at its own time. Mm -hmm. So they idealize the figures though, but they put a lot of focus on making it look historically accurate. You say idealize, but he still gave them those terrible haircuts. Oh yeah, but that, that's also a style of idealization, maybe you can say. It's, it's a fashion choice. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. And one more question I can ask, maybe we can think about, is this is a painting from British history, mm -hmm. but the painter is French. And I wanted to ask why about does that. He, yeah, you, yeah. Might, you might wonder, why does he paint something from English history? And he, he did this, not just with this painting, but with many other paintings. He painted stuff from, from English history, which is very interesting. I wonder whether, I know the English and the French have a long history, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering whether maybe this could be a kind of political propaganda to show how bad the English are. Oh, that's I'm good. I'm guessing, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking like, this is what the English do, but they kill their kids because they don't want them to be on the throne. Oh. Maybe I'm thinking some kind of, we don't do that in France. So. Oh, maybe. That, that, might be, that might be a good guess. That might be a good way of using this history. That's how I read it as a British person. Fact, that might be the case. But in this, in this time, actually, De La Roche is after something else. Because the time uh, he paints in France has been going through a lot of turmoil. Mm. It was the French Revolution, then after that is the French Empire, then it's a Republic, an Empire comes back again, Republic comes back again, and the French society is really torn and worn down with all these political turmoil. Mm -hmm. That's why painting these uh, issues, this, this violence or dark scenes, these troubled uh, episodes from the English history, he, he also actually gives a message to the French society that actually they are the ones in trouble, referring to these dark periods from English mm -hmm. history. He's actually doing the opposite of uh -huh. what you thought, but you thought was a very, a so very it's, good guess. it's not about anti-monarchy? He's no. not trying to say we shouldn't no. have a monarch? No, right. he's basically uh, giving a reference to what they are in, in, in that situation. They're in a troubled situation, so are the boys in the painting. Ah, okay, so he's representing France in the boys. Yeah, more okay. or less. Uh -huh. He's showing how, how France's chaotic situation is actually represented in the paintings, chaotic, troubled Who is knocking at the say. door then? French it's society. Probably the, probably the, <laughs> oh yeah, maybe. It's maybe the political people who are in power in France, who's right. causing the trouble on the boys. You okay. can you can identify it like that. I mean, of course, he's not giving this message with a, with a very, very clear perspective or very clear symbols, but this is why he saw that mm -hmm. he's painting, he's been painting these things. And when he exhibited this painting in the Salon, it was a huge success I in France. To ask if it was it successful. was a huge success in, in okay. France. Okay. And one thing I can also tell about this painting is that if you go to Tower of London in London and take a tour with a beef eater, these guards uh, that, uh, that just guard the tower, mm. you take a tour with them and they, then they just take you to the exact room that these boys were kept or they're thought to be kept. And then you see where they were, actually. You just see this room, maybe not this bed, because Tower of London does not have furniture now in. But the, you actually know and see where they were killed. The exact place. The Tower of London is normally where people go before they're executed. It's the place where you're taken if you're about to be dealt with in exactly. some way. Exactly. So, this, is, this is the thing that they, what they tell in Tower of London, because they just talk about the boys. They talk about another queen, Jane Grey, for example, where she's killed. Right. So many killings you hear about. 
but it's a still a good cool. place to visit. I believe it's one of the best places to visit in London. But the, Do that. <laughs> the, the painting is not in the Tower of London. No, no. this Where painting, this painting is in the collection of Musée de Louvre. So uh -huh. it's in it's in Paris okay. today. And the right, painter right. is is de la Roche is is French and it was exhibited in France. So mm -hmm. it, it is in the French monarchy. It was left there. Yeah, this is really interesting. I think yeah. I've learned a lot. Great, um, great. Thank thanks you for. Telling me this awful story. <laughs> that just made your very day. Very dark, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all for today on Children of Edward by Bella Roche. Thank you very much for watching us. Stick around for more idiots' questions about fine art. Uh, beginners. Yeah, beginners. Sorry. And stay tuned for Art Talks for Beginners. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.